Cheers and welcome in. I am J Bar, and boy, do I have a treat for you today. But quick question first: Do you like my new shades? If you couldn't tell already, they're a little more than meets the eye, which is actually a pretty good way to put that. As I've been using these over the last couple of weeks, and since then, a lot more content has been meeting my eyes. Just a fun little pun to get us started today. What I have here are the Air 2 Pros from Xreal, formerly known as Nreal, which is a company that started back in 2017 and has been specializing in AR ever since. And if you've seen a lot of my content, you know that I've done a lot with virtual reality, but I've been kind of eeping in to the augmented reality world. And these glasses have a lot of qualities that I have been looking for. So let's talk a bit about what Xreal sent me and what I'm gonna be showing you today. I have the Air 2 Pros on right now. They also have a version called just the Air 2s, and then they have an Air 2 Ultra. The Air 2 Ultra, we're not gonna talk about a bunch because that is a development kit version. And the only difference with the Pros here versus just the Air 2s is they have three different dimming options when you're plugged into a device. So if I press the button on the side here, as you can see right now, I can see through to you guys just fine. This is 0% dimming, and I'm gonna press it again. We're gonna be at 30% dimming now, and I'm gonna press it again. And now we're at 100% dimming, which unless there's a lot of light beyond where I'm looking, I don't really see much coming through, uh, just a tiny bit, almost like you had just really strong sunglasses on. And the glasses themselves do also come with this additional piece that essentially makes it a full cinematic mode when you're looking through it. No light coming in, so everything else is blocked out, which is good if you just wanna relax and watch a movie in a theater-like experience. And we also got sent this Beam Pro device, which looks like a phone, but it's not. It's more like a miniature tablet with AR companion capabilities. And we'll go more into this in a moment. First, I wanna talk about what the AR glasses kind of are and what they do on their own. And then we'll talk about what the Beam is and what it does on its own. And then we'll talk about the magic that happens when you kind of put these two devices together. So you can get the Air 2 versions for about $360 and the Air 2 Pros here for about $450. Then with the Beam Pro, you can get the Beam Pro device for about $200 if you go with the six gigabyte of memory, 128 gigs of storage model, or you can get it for $250 if you go with an eight gig of memory, 256 gigabytes of storage model. And if you go with the Air 2 Pro and largest option for the Beam Pro combo, it is gonna run you about $700. But on their own here, the Air 2s kind of act as a screen mirroring device for any device that you're able to plug them into. And compatible devices would be anything that can do display over type C. So your latest iPhones, iPads, MacBooks usually have that, a lot of Windows PCs and a lot of Android phones. However, unfortunately, my Pixel 7 Pro here does not have that ability. Apparently Google's pretty stingy on allowing display over Type-C, but the latest Pixel 9 series, which I'm gonna upgrade to soon has them, so I'm pretty excited to try it on that. However, for now, we're gonna try it with a different device. A couple of things I wanna point out here is that these sport a one-to-one -one weight distribution, so when you're wearing them on your head, they do feel rather balanced. You do also have these comfy little nose pieces here that move and squish, so you can really get the screen close to your face without feeling like your nose is being pinched. You also have three different temple adjustments, which just take the side piece here and move it up or down slightly. I will say the first time I tried to do the temple adjustment, it was kind of scary because it almost feels like you're gonna break it, but you just gotta apply a little bit of pressure and then you'll hear a little click and then you're good. And without the nose pad piece here, these weigh a total of 75 grams. So weight wise, in my opinion, they feel really good. And some of the hardware we're working with are these Sony OLED panels, which look very bright. I believe it gets up to 500 nits. And when you're wearing them, the screen in front of you gets up to 130 inches and it looks amazing. It's, it is like you're in a theater and you just have this nice, beautiful screen sitting right in front of you. You also get a 46 degree field of view out of this, as well as a 120 Hertz screen when you're directly plugged into a device, but that does drop down to 90 Hertz when you use the Beam Pro, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit here. So we're gonna throw these on here and try them with my Pimax Portal device, which is my poor man's Steam Deck. But as soon as I plug my Air 2s into my Pimax Portal here, I immediately get the mirrored screen and I'm able to just kind of stand or sit or do whatever I want pretty comfortably while using the device. It also automatically has the audio coming out of the speakers on the Air 2s, which in my opinion have been working extremely well they involve spatial audio, so it beams audio directly into your earballs, and I don't think anyone else around you really could hear it even at full volume unless they were sitting pretty close to you. I just loaded up Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Big shout out to MGS. I'm gonna attempt to show you what this looks like when you're looking through the glasses.
Pretty good, huh? I've also used these with my laptop a bit, which has been a very similar experience. I just plug this into the Type-C port on the back of my laptop and I'm good to go. I have a mirrored view of my screen and I'm able to just get to work. Let's set the glasses down for a second and talk a little bit about this Beam Pro device. Like I said earlier, the Beam Pro kind of looks like a phone, but it's actually more of a phone sized tablet that has AR spatial computing type capabilities. I believe Xreal calls it an AR companion device. It runs on Android 14 and it's currently the only one out there that comes preloaded with all of your typical Google apps. But beyond that, it mostly works like you would expect an Android tablet or phone to work. However, there is something that makes it special on its own. These two cameras right here that are both 50 megapixels and 50 millimeters apart, which is meant to match the typical human eye interpupillary distance. I hope I said that right. And the reason they have those is you can go into the camera app here and actually select spatial video or spatial photo. So I can take pictures or video of anything I want and it's gonna come out with that side-by-side -side type image and anything you take that is spatial video and spatial photos can be viewed on the Air 2s or any device that is able to view 3D content. I know there's not a lot of stuff out there, but it is kind of cool having that capability and maybe we'll see a little bit more of it as we go on. I will post a link in the description here to both a picture and a video I'll take of the VR treadmill behind me. If you do have a device that is able to view 3D content, you can check that out. Now let's dive into what happens when you combine these two devices. One other thing about the Beam Pro here that sets it apart from other devices is it has these two Type-C ports on the bottom one specifically for the glasses connection and then one for charging. So theoretically, you could be in these things forever as long as you are charging it at the same time that you're using them. I'm gonna plug this in here and we're gonna show you a little bit of the magic that happens when you use these devices together. So here I'll show you a bit of the interface. And as soon as you plug the glasses into the Beam Pro, it goes into this controller mode. And you have a pointer right here that you can recalibrate just by holding the home button on the bottom here. And you just swipe left or right if you wanna page through all of your apps. Very intuitive, very easy. All of our apps are in this almost Apple Vision Pro-like interface. I can see everything past the glasses and past the apps as well. So I can kind of have these again in different dimming modes, depending on how immersed I want to be in this interface. What's utilized here is what they're calling 3DOF hover technology. So as I move around, things are moving with me and it looks pretty stable. There's also 0DOF, which is what essentially stabilizes the image so that if there's a lot of bumps or shakes, this is still staying kind of smooth, kind of follows me. It's kind of uh, flowy, if I could put it that way. Uh, and that can help with anything like causing dizziness or motion sickness if you're using these in a car or on a plane, things like that. And because this is an Android device, you end up having access to all of the Google Play Store apps. So there's millions of apps out there that anything that you could have on your typical Android devices, you can have on this, whether it's to view content, to do gaming, or to be productive. All of that works great. We also have a couple of different modes to play with. There's the follow mode, which is what you're in by default, where it just nice and smoothly follows my vision here. Or if I just tap this orange button on the side, I can switch it to an anchor mode. So wherever I was looking, it's gonna anchor that in relation to my body. So that way I can work on something over here, maybe while watching a tutorial over here. You can also load up multiple apps at a time and kind of have them in this side-by-side -side mode. Another thing that could be useful if you are watching some sort of tutorial or uh, video on something that you're trying to learn and you're trying to take notes on the other side. Quite a few applications for this and you can tap a little middle button here to kind of switch what's in your immediate display. When you're in the follow mode, you can actually change the window side from a medium to a large, depending on how you want to view it. There's also this broad view beta, which I'm typically always in that mode. I haven't had any issues with it. That one just kind of gives you this more widescreen view. But then if you switch to the body anchor mode, you can actually manipulate the windows just a little bit further by clicking and dragging them around in your space. And if you swipe right or left, it'll enlarge or it'll shrink down that image to kind of more custom sizes. So let's get into my experience a little bit over the last couple of weeks with the Air 2 Pros and the Beam Pro. By far, I have found the most usefulness out of it for gaming and streaming content. However, it's really got me wanting to try to be productive with it. I've always wanted to figure out a way to be really productive mobily and not have to carry around a laptop or things like that, but it's never really seemed like a viable option. But since I've been using this, I really wanna start figuring out ways to be able to have maybe the right combination of apps or just have the right type of setup where I'm able to do more 
editing and just managing of my brand and my content while I'm on the go. And like I said, having this is really the first time I felt like that is possible. I'm just kind of still working that out on how I can do it. So I haven't done a ton of it yet. I did test when I was out to lunch one day, trying out a little Bluetooth keyboard that I have that I can connect to the Beam Pro and responding to some emails. And that was a pretty good experience. But when it comes to streaming movies and playing games, I have had an amazing experience with these things. At night, because I have a really cool deal with my fiance where she just watches whatever she wants and I have no say in it, what I have been doing is throwing these bad boys on and catching up on whatever shows or movies I want to watch. Uh, the other night, I actually watched through all of Avengers Endgame on these and I was comfortable. I was able to just lay back in my bed and enjoy the movie. And I had a really good time with that. I also have been playing a lot of VR these days and I haven't had much time to catch up on flat screen games that I have just wanted to keep up with or play through. And one thing that's been working really well with the Beam Pros here, because it does have a Wi-Fi 6 capable connection, is I've been able to play games like Elden Ring or Hogwarts Legacy, and I'm debating picking up the Wukong game because now at night, it's a little simpler for me to just load up Steam Link on this thing, connect a Bluetooth controller to it, and start playing. And I have had a pretty seamless experience so far. I do believe Steam Link said that it was an unknown device, uh, so it wasn't sure about the performance, but I have seen no issues so far. And also it'll work with any other game streaming service like Xbox Game Pass or Amazon Luna, things like that. And now for a couple of things that I think I would have on my wish list for these. From some of my research, it looks like a previous version of the Beam had actually the capability of putting this into a side view, which meant it was just a little screen kind of in the upper corner of your vision. And I would really like to see something like that come back. The only thing I really don't see these viable for is like really walking around as much and using it just because you always have a screen here. I probably could get more used to that, but if I was gonna go like say on a walk, I would want to be able to have it in a side view just so I had a better line of sight on where I'm walking to. And additionally, when I was using it on my laptop, I noticed that they do have a Nebula software that you can download eventually, but on their website, it said coming soon. I saw some preview stuff on it though, and it looks like you'd be able to extend your displays in a really nice way where you could have your laptop display here, and then you have extra displays say above it or next to it, or just in your view. I would like to see that come out and hopefully be performant and pretty fleshed out in terms of what kind of options we have for extended screens. That could be a huge help towards productivity when I'm not in my studio here. Just to share some of my final thoughts on this, I really like these. Uh, like I said, I've been using them every day for the last couple of weeks since Xreal sent them to me, and I just keep coming back to them. I find them extremely comfortable, so I've been able to wear them for long periods of time. I am not the type of person who wants to wear my Quest 3 and do like productivity or watch a full movie or anything like that. And even I had a brief stint trying an Apple Vision Pro. Neither of those devices were something that I felt I would want to sit through a whole movie in or especially go out in public in. I find these much more enjoyable for flat screen gaming and just viewing content compared to a bigger device like the Apple Vision Pro or the Quest 3. And I'm just not the type of person that wants to go out in public with a full VR device strapped to my face and get a lot of looks from that. So I feel like I could at least be a little bit more incognito. And I 100% am going to be taking this anytime I'm traveling, especially going on airplanes. I This is a game changer in terms of just being able to sit comfortably on an airplane and watch any content you want. You can expand the storage on the Beam Pro here. But you could store a lot of offline content on it as well. But there you have it. I really hope you found this video informative. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for things you don't think I've answered yet. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you see more of my content down the road. Cheers, and we'll see you guys in the next one.